All right. This hour, we're going to talk about something that uh, is going to uh, require your close attention. It will offend some of you, so I recommend if you are easily offended, tune out now, right now. Do not listen to what I'm about to do. I'm recommending you get the hell away from this radio station right now. Just turn it off. All right? All right, we have, um, I hope, it's just us now, right? Okay. I'm not going to give any details about the person we're talking about, except to say it's a listener. It's a listener who told me a story. And I'm going to keep the identities of all the people out of this because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. And I have no evidence that this person would act upon any of the things she said. But uh, a listener wrote me, who told me that she has a daughter who's 13, and the daughter is for her mom like every 13-year-old. Like, you start wanting to spy on them and go through their things. You want to see if they're having sex. You want to see if they're smoking pot, whatever. You're constantly, like, monitoring their behavior. Because you never know what they're going to do. You read these stories about high school being the new bastion of oral sex. Everybody's doing it. You read things like that. Junior high school. And, uh, well, you're just kind of keeping an eye on things. So, what this mom told me, and again, I didn't even want to read the exact verbiage because I did not want to have this person identifiable in any way, is that uh, one day her daughter was chatting online with what she called her boyfriend. The boyfriend is 12. 12. And they're having a little chat online. Now, I don't understand why anybody does this, but it, and it annoys the crap out of me when I've seen it. There are some people who are online 24 hours a day, and they're not even in front of the computer. They're just online. They just want to have their presence there at all times. They, they go out. They go to sleep. They have sex. They take a shower. They go to work, whatever. They just are logged on all the time. I... I I, I think that defeats the purpose of an instant message. I mean, I think everybody should log off unless they are physically present. What good is it to have your name up there all the time? If you're not there and I want to get in touch with you, I'll send you an email. I do not understand. The, there are people who are so obsessed with being online. They're online 24 hours a day. Ever send an instant message to somebody like a dork? You know, thinking you're chatting with somebody who's sitting in front of the computer. And you hear back from them, like, tomorrow. <laughs> kind of defeats the whole purpose. I mean, the time it took, you could have dialed them up and had a phone conversation with them. It's the stupidest damn thing. So, in this particular story, said 13-year-old girl leaves the computer, which is apparently sitting in some public place in the home like a kitchen table or a desk or something. And um, while daughter is away in her room studying or whatever she's doing, mom goes over to use the computer and sees that it's logged on. And there's an instant message and she's mom. Okay, so she checks out the instant message. I'm not even going to tell you what the instant message said except to say that this 12-year-old made a very graphic comment about his genitalia and what he would like to do with it. This was intended for the daughter and not for anyone else to see.
Now, that in and of itself would have to be mortifying for everybody involved, right? The 12 year old boy who's just learning how to do cyber sex, I guess. The daughter who doesn't want mom knowing that she has conversations like this with her 12 year old boyfriend. And uh, anybody else who might get involved, like the teacher or the school principal or the parents or whoever, how would you like to have to have that little conversation? Like, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You'll never believe what your son wrote to my daughter today. <laughs> now, that in and of itself would be enough of a story, right? Isn't that interesting that, that, that something like that happened? Twelve-year-old boy. But here's where the story gets really interesting. And, and before you say, oh, you better turn this person into the police, this person, I, I, am, I am certain from what I read, is a responsible individual who would never act upon this. But um, mom told me that, um, God, with the kind of, I don't know if it's true, but with the kind of confidence he exhibited, it got me really hot. He's 12. Now you've heard all these stories about Mary Kay Letourneau and all that, right? And, I mean, the fact is, there's a lot of women out there who think about these things. Why? Because in our society, children are sexualized at a younger age. They mature earlier. They develop earlier. And... Um, they are exposed to all kinds of language that kids were not exposed to 10, 20, 30 years ago. And so uh, sometimes uh, people are amazed at what 12-year-olds are saying. Some people freak out and get angry and want to spank their kid. And then, from the married Kay Letourneau school, there's people who go, you know what? I have to admit, it was hot. Now, it is my opinion just my opinion, I can't prove it empirically, but it is my opinion based on experience. You know, we have a society where adults do not want to grow up anymore. We talked about this years ago with the TV show Seinfeld. Here's a bunch of approximately 40-year-old people, none of whom are married or have any apparent responsibility. They just hang out together and, uh, you know, go out to dinner together and uh, sit around talking about nothing all the time and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, they, they don't appear to have any responsibility in life at all. And they dress like they're 20, 25 years old, 30 years old. They do not dress like 40-year-olds. They do not act like 40-year-olds. Yes, Dean, Friends was another show like that. And um, that is also true of parents these days. We are seeing stories about uh, the influence of desperate housewives and all the women out there who uh, don't care that they're mothers, they still want to dress sexy, they want to wear sexy outfits. And, 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 and I might say there's TV shows like the Gilmore Girls you may have seen, where you've got like the mom who became a single mother at a really young age. And so now she has the daughter and everybody thinks they're sisters. Now there's a dynamic here that I think a lot of us are afraid to explore, but I'm not afraid to explore. I happen to believe, A that mothers are very competitive with their daughters jealous in fact because the daughter has everything mom doesn't have or things mom used to have maybe the daughter looks like mom did when she was 13 14 15 whatever young she has her whole life ahead of her no stretch marks guys are following her around and sending her instant messages on the computer and things like that calling her on her cell phone her cell phone is ringing continuously do you have a daughter like that teenage daughter cell phone rings all the time all the time all the time it's guy after guy after guy after guy and I honestly believe that somewhere in there moms who still want to appear young and sexy the ones you are reading about in all these desperate housewives articles are in some ways competitive with their daughters. There are moms who want to look sexier than their daughters. 
give you an example, one that I've talked about uh, in recent times. Here in L.A. and uh, other places I've been, when I was in South America, I saw a, uh, I saw this, it was rampant. So many moms have had plastic surgery, and dads for that matter, that what you have is you have parents who are better looking than the children. Because after all, the children are the product of what the parents really look like. Not what the plastic surgeon made them look like. So you actually have mothers who get a leg up on their daughters by getting boob jobs, and facelifts, and nose jobs, and, and you name it. Earlobe reductions, ass implants, whatever. So you actually, usually the daughter is hotter than the mom. That's just usually the way it is. But not, in, uh, when I was in Argentina, that's what I saw. I saw moms who were way hotter than their own daughters. Lots of them. But that's because mom's been to the surgeon over and over and over. Oh, yeah. I believe that now that moms get divorced or there are so many single mothers, I believe that moms feel like girlfriends and that moms are competitive with their daughters. And to take that a step further... I know there are moms listening to this show right now who are turned on at the sight of their daughter's boyfriend. Turned on. Daughter has a boyfriend and he is, you know, it's like a Mary Kay Letourneau situation. The boyfriend is 12, 13, 14. But he has cockiness and attitude and confidence and <clears throat> maybe a little bulge you've been looking at, Mom. I believe there are moms who are keeping a close eye on the boyfriend of the daughter. And I believe there are moms who have fantasized about being with the daughter's boyfriend gotten hot at the thought of what the daughter and the boyfriend are doing or might do or could do. Maybe the daughter isn't even sexually active, but I'll bet there are moms out there saying, I'd know what to do with that if I got my hands on it. Understand that I am not in favor in any way of child molestation. I believe that people should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea of where I'm coming from believe children should be protected. I was very, very strongly in favor of Mary Kay Letourneau doing hard time. The first time. And uh, my, I, my track record is pretty clear on this. But I also am a believer in talking about human nature. I don't believe in talking about the way the world should be, would be, could be. I believe in talking about the world that is. The one we live in. The real one. And in the real world... Women are desperately trying to keep their youth. Their daughters are maturing earlier. Women are trying to stay looking younger and sexier longer. And the result is that women are getting competitive with their own daughters. And I believe that there are women out there, and I'm looking at the phones, and they're all ringing. <laughs> I believe there are women out there who have had fantasies about their daughter's boyfriends. Maybe you've taken it a step further. I'd certainly love to know. Because I know we have a lot of, uh, not just single mothers, married mothers out there. No matter. Single mothers, I think, are even more competitive. Even more worried about looking sexy. Even more worried about trying to take attention away from their daughter. I dated a woman one time who had a daughter who was 10. The daughter was... You know, harmless, and I was harmless in this particular case. And the daughter used to like stand there, like flirting, like like probably flirting one of the first times in her life, flirting, or standing there with her ass sticking out. You know, and, and clothed, but like you know, like leaning up against the wall, sticking her ass out. Mom was furious. I I wasn't paying attention to it or anything like that. It was 10. But um, I think in that case, mom was as much worried about this being another chick that I might look at 
as she was that uh, this is her daughter. There's definitely competition going on. So if you have ever looked at your daughter's boyfriend with lust in your heart, I want to hear the whole story. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Boy, it's great to talk to you, man. You're like therapy for me. Thank you. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> oh, it's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. All right. I do believe there is a competition going on between mothers and daughters. It's a dynamic I've rarely seen to such an extent. Now, we've had uh, countless reports from men saying they did the mother and they did the daughter, blah, blah, blah. But how about when uh, the daughter is like, you know, a teenager? The boyfriend is a teenager. Ladies, uh, you can tell me the truth. Ever found yourself lusting after your daughter's boyfriend? I want to know. 1-800-5800-TOM is your telephone number. Charlie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm okay, Charlie. Um, I was calling because I do find that that is true. My mother, however, was the... She, she was like that. And we're actually still in competition with each other because I think that she is afraid that she is losing her youth. Mm -hmm. Um... She's very, 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 I mean, she's very, very beautiful, but I think that she found that the men that she's interested in, they're interested in me now, you know? Uh-huh. And she, I noticed that she, that she did have like a slight crush on my boyfriend, and they did end up sleeping together. They did. How old is your mom? Um, she just made 42. She's 42, you're 23, and your boyfriend is how old? Um, he was, he was, we were the same age. So he was he was nineteen twenty at the time. Really? Yeah. So your mom was like thirty nine. Your boyfriend was nineteen. Right. And so how did uh, this start? Tell me the story. Um, he was like one of the, like the first serious boyfriends that I had that I actually like bought around my family and everything. Uh huh. And he he got really comfortable around my family. It was to the point where he was at my house when I wasn't even there. Uh huh. And I noticed that it was like way too frequent. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, like, when exactly it happened, but it did happen. How did you know it happened? I actually heard that it happened through through friends, of mutual friends of mine and his. and So he was telling people about it? Yeah, he was. And even some of her friends. I nailed her mom, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. So what was that like confronting him? Tell me. Yeah, I mean, of course, they denied it for, like, a really, really long time, but it was... It, it was it was nasty to me. It was disgusting to me. Now, did it happen once, or was it happening for a sustained period of time? I think it was happening more than once because she was giving him money. Money? Yeah, she yeah. He would like ask my mom for money, and she would like give it to him. Really? Yeah. And then it's like all the guys that she dates. Her attitude changes a lot. Like if there's guys around that she's dating. And they're, like, looking at me, and she gets, like, all pissed about it. Does she really? Yeah, she does. Oh, boy. You know, see, I'm seeing this dynamic a lot with moms and daughters. I'm seeing it a lot. And, um, all right, so, <laughs> now, your mom finally did admit it? No, she she didn't admit it, but she'll say she'll say things about how she's not perfect and how she's, you know... She's sorry, you know, if she ever hurt me or whatnot. Uh -huh. But it, it's still... And the boyfriend never admitted it? Of course not. Uh -huh. And did you ever, like, uh, have a confrontation with, like, him and the person who uh, who told you that it happened? No. No, we didn't because it wasn't... It's like I kind of knew, I guess, that was just confirmation for me. And it was like, you know, okay. Because... When you hear it, you know, when I have to hear it from somewhere else, it's, I, I think that might even be worse. Wow. But it happened. So did you, uh, how long did it take for you to break up with him? Um, after that, it took me, I'll, I'll admit it, it took me a while. So you kept going out with him? What'd you say? You kept going out with him? Um, yeah, we went out probably like a couple of months more, and then that was it. It hurt. It hurt bad. Because it's like I really didn't didn't really know if it was true, but it was, and I just had to deal with it. 
you know, I just had to tell myself that that's what it is. Wow. And, I mean, even, and I, I don't know, I don't know if she did that because her boyfriend hit on me, and it's like I told her, you know, that her boyfriend, you know, propositioned me to sleep with them or whatever, so I don't know what it was. Maybe that had, like, a big thing to do with it. Wow. All right. So, so you never got back at her and, like, did one of her boyfriends or anything, did you? Yeah, I did. You did? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. How was that? It was fine because, I mean... Because you were doing it to get even? Yeah, that and, I mean, I I made I got profit off of it. I made him a sugar daddy, so... Really? I won both ways, I feel. Now, was it creepy to be having sex with your boyfriend knowing he'd been with your mom? Yeah, it was right. <laughs> I mean, what was sex like then? Different. I'll bet it was. Very, very different. When you dumped him, did you tell him that was the reason? No, I didn't, because that wasn't really the reason. I didn't like, I didn't, I didn't want him anymore. I don't even think it was because of that. I just didn't want him anymore. Oh, boy. Well, Charlie, uh, thank you for that story. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a good one, Tom. You too. I appreciate it. Wow, wow, wow. See, there is competition between mothers and daughters. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Have you ever lusted after your daughter's boyfriend? Have you ever secretly lusted? Have you ever done more, like Charlie's mom did? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We come back, we'll talk to some more people who've had this experience. You might be the daughter, you might be the mom, you might be, well, who knows who you might be. I know I'm not imagining this. I know there are women I have dated over the years, and there was sexual tension with their mom. It was there. Maybe they never crossed that bridge, maybe they never said anything. There were some moms I was convinced were taking out the power tools late at night. Thinking about it. And I know there are women like you out there right now. Tom, Tom, Tom. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Getting married or having a girlfriend doesn't make you any less alone than you already are. But you got someone in your bed. You got someone to, you know, be with. But you realize you could have someone different in your bed every night of the week. Every night could be a new adventure. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Los Angeles at 1-800-5800-TOM. And if you're just tuning in, we are talking about the increasing competition between mothers and daughters. Mom is always trying to dress younger these days, dress sexier. There are a lot of single mothers out there with daughters. And they act uh, more like jealous friends than like moms in some cases. And I am wondering um, if you have experienced this. I'm wondering if as a mom you have ever felt attracted to your daughter's boyfriend. Maybe even your daughter's husband. I'm wondering uh, if you've been a victim of something like this. If you have, call us now at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. This is Leah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Tom Likas. Hi. How are you? Do you care? Oh, I do. I do. Mm. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. Mm-hmm. For one, I've listened to you all the time, but I'd like to know, how old are you? I'm 48. You're 48? Yes, I am. And how good a sex life have you ever had? Oh, really good? Really Have good. you had it all? Really good. Really good. Okay, let me ask you something. I'm probably about the same age that you are, except I'm a year older. Mm-hmm. And when it, when it comes to mothers looking at their boyfriend's um, other half, whatever you're... I under, hey, I, we're talking about mothers looking at their daughter's boyfriend. Okay, but but when you take mothers, which I am a mother, mm-hmm. I have a grown daughter that's mm-hmm. 25, mm-hmm. why in the world would I look at younger men when I've had a pretty good one? And I, I, I don't know why you would. We're not talking about you. But... But my thing is, is you. What do you care it. about what other people do? It's, it has nothing to no, do no, with no. you. See, if, if it has nothing to do with you, why are you concerned about it? 
because there is a lot of mothers out there that have had good sexual relationships that have been very experienced, and you're talking about just a small majority of... We never said this was a majority. Okay, well, the thing I'm saying... So, are you, are you hard of hearing or just stupid? Oh, no, 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 I'm not hard of hearing, and I'm not... Well, then you know that we never, ever, at any point, said the majority of mothers are trying to take their daughter's boyfriends, ever. Okay. okay ever. Well, and you're that. so, you're so stupid. You, you already heard it. You're so stupid. You're so goddamn but thick as a brick. You have to call in here and make these stupid comments. Let me say my... You've already said your piece. You already made it clear, like Emily Latella years ago on Saturday Night Live, you made it clear that you're not paying attention to a goddamn thing I said. But neither are you. I don't really give a rat's ass what you're saying, and I'm being honest about it. And you have the radio show, so you should... You're damn straight I have the radio show, and frankly, I don't have to listen to a word you say. And that's okay. Then but you damn straight it is. Let me ask you one other question, okay? Mm. Let's be fair. Now, this is going to be some uh, question designed to hurt or insult me. Go right oh, ahead. No, not at all. Here not we go. All, because, you know what, you're very good at what you do. Yes, I am. That's why mind. I'm down here at the radio station and, and you're calling you in. very optimistic, but did anybody ever tell you in life that everything gets a turn, including you? So, that finds you single... And you talk about all this sex... Uh, I, first of all, I don't use the word single. I'm unmarried. I am not single. Well, what's the difference? The same thing. Uh, no. Single is somebody who's desperate to hook up with somebody else. But that's not the definition in the book. That, you know that. Uh, there, you know that. I'm talking about how these words are used. Anyone who goes on singles cruises or that's, singles mixers or singles I'm events, they're desperate. But Tom, listen to me for a minute. I've been listening yeah. to you now for three minutes. I haven't heard a goddamn thing except that you don't even know what the hell we're talking about here. No, you have to understand. I don't have to understand a goddamn thing. That everything gets a turn. And All right, what you, you said do? that already. When do you have any men, new material? When men, you thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Tiana on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm okay, Tiana. Okay, that's good. I'm just calling to agree with you. I'm one of the victims. I'm 22 years old. I have an electrical engineering degree from USC, and my mom is, I mean, she didn't even go to college, and I see it every day in her actions. And I just want to know, I mean, what is it? Is it just L.A.? Because I'm from L.A. Is it just L.A. Oh, or no. is it just nationwide? No, this is a combination of factors. Nowadays, you have more single mothers than there have ever been in the history of this country. Ever. Exactly. And exactly. you have more women who are giving birth at 15, 16. So, you know, like you've got a, a 30-year-old woman with a 14-year-old daughter. Correct. So uh, then let me ask you, Tom, as a daughter coming from this perspective, I mean, how, how would you, uh, what is your advice on how to handle that? Well, I would handle it the way I would handle any uh, a jealous friend who starts interfering. You have to nip that in the bud. Okay, so just nip it in the bud and just, I mean, do I put her in check and say, look, Mom, I mean, yep. it's not my fault you had me at a young age. I mean, what do I That's do? That's right. That's what you're saying. Because you know what? I think a conversation like that could be very productive. Yes. Okay. Well, I do you. think so. Okay, good. And the other, thing, the other thing about the demographic uh, the peculiarity here is that we, we now have adults who want to look young all the time. They want to be young all the time. They, exactly. they, plastic surgery, uh, cutting edge fashions, what have you. Uh, there have been all these stories, maybe you've seen them recently, about desperate housewives where they say, well, today's housewife is not like housewives years ago. She wants to look sexy. She still exactly. wants to look sexy, even though. Because, and that's all about these single mothers who are out there. Uh, they, they live in the suburbs, some of them. Uh, there's women in the, on those apartment buildings in Santa Clarita in the divorce department buildings. You know the ones I'm talking about. They've got exactly. kids. They want to live in a good school district. They're walking around with bare midriffs and their children who are 10, 12, 14 years old. Exactly. And you know, I just wanted to call in and just tell you I completely agree with you, and I just wanted to get your advice on how I should approach the situation. Thank you, Tiana. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Marisol, you're on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hi, it's me, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Good. Um, I'm Spanish, and I'm 32 years old, and um, I have a daughter. She's 13. Mm -hmm. Okay, I had my daughter at a younger age, uh -huh. and um, I'm very sexy. Uh -huh. Okay, and I I think that being sexy doesn't mean that you're going to give, you know, bear a carrot to your daughter. You know, uh -huh. and I think my daughter, she's proud of me, and she always say, you're so beautiful, you're dressed up so good. And she wants to meet, like, look like me when she grows up. 
And I don't think it's bad about that. What do you think about it? Well, uh, uh, clearly, uh, there's nothing wrong with looking sexy. That's that's good. Now, now, uh, uh, does your daughter ever have a boyfriend that you've taken another look at? No. No. Okay, that's never happened. She is really young, and she she. All I'm calling is because she really liked the, the you know the way I dress. Uh huh. You know, but nice you don't hands. you don't feel competitive with your daughter yet. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm concerned about. It. You're worried about feeling competitive with her. Yeah, she she said that the, she only likes the way I dress up. You know, when I go to work and I go to the parties, and she thinks that um, I look beautiful, mm -hmm. and I don't think there's nothing wrong about that. Yeah. Now, are you single? No. No, you're married. No, I'm not, but I have a boyfriend. You have a boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. But you're worried that what she might take his attention away? No, no, uh -huh. no. Because I'm, you know, I'm 32 years old, and I'm and I'm with a. You know, American guy, and he's really handsome, and he's he's probably about nine years older than me, uh -huh. which is you know it's not a big difference. So we're getting along pretty good. But my daughter, you know, yeah. she really likes the the way you know I'm raising the house, and I'm Spanish. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm Salvadorian, and she thinks that um, you know he's a great man because uh -huh. he's raising my daughter really good. Uh huh. And um. He gave really good ideas to him, and I like the way he talks to her uh -huh. about going to college, you know, and all that. But, you know, we're talking about sexy people here, and mm -hmm. I really, you know, think that she likes the way I dress, and my boyfriend is really impressed. We're living together already for two years, and mm -hmm. we're really happy. Well, good for you, Marisol. Thank you for the call. Some like it. What they hundred by eight hundred. Some like it. What they hundred by eight hundred eight six six. I used to think that guys should treat women, you know, the way that women think they should be treated. But on a pedestal. Um, yeah. The only yeah. time I put a woman on a pedestal is so I can look up her dress. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Christine. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Hello, Tom. Hello, Christine. How are you? Do you care? Of course I care. I'm doing great. Good. I wanted to call to say that I am I am one of those young moms. I had my daughter when I was young. I won't say how young because people might know who I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, she's 17 now. and um, Well, that means you were 18. Uh, one year younger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, probably about two years ago when she started bringing around guys mm -hmm. and, and stuff, she had let me know, well, Mom, I wanted to let you know you're considered a MILF among my friends. And that was a pretty big boost to my ego and made me feel good because I try to stay in shape and stuff. And she brings around some pretty good-looking guys. But and how old are these guys? Uh, well, now they're older. Now that she's 17, they're ranging from 17 to 19, maybe around that age. And do you but ever, now that you know they think you're a MILF, do you find yourself I thinking about these guys? Never in competition. We wear okay. and, uh, same clothes she wears, same style. But um, And I've been married 18 years. Uh-huh. So you never had a naughty thought about these guys? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say... Hello? It feel good. You know that uh, you're still attractive and you the Mrs. Robinson's kind of thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you like being thought of as a MILF? Um... Well, at first I was kind of embarrassed when I found out what that really meant. And then, you know, I said, that shouldn't be embarrassing. That's, you know, that's a compliment. And, uh, you know, I just kind of take it as it goes. I'm probably going to lose you soon because I'm in a parking structure. So. I can tell. But, uh, Christine, thank you for that. Charlene, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Charlene. How are you? Uh, do you care? I do, most definitely. I'm doing great. I have to tell you, I can't wait to get off work every single day to get in my car and turn on your show. It's fantastic. I love that. I love it. When I was younger, younger than I am now, I was married to a man, and 
as stupid as that was to begin with, a month after we were married, I caught him in bed with my best friend. They ended up getting married, having a child, so forth, so on. A month after they were married, she caught him in bed with her mother. Now, this woman, 40-something-year-old woman that was dressing like she was 16 years old. Oh, damn, I wish we weren't running out of time. The Tom Likas Show.